holy shit, it's a year later and we're finally working on the all-wheel drive Civic again. Dario here, Nico there. Uh, we're finally getting back to things. Uh, I've kind of realized that I have no free time, so I have to just make time. So we're finally making time to get the all-wheel drive Civic back together. Uh, right now it's like, what is it? It's March 1st tomorrow. So it's March 1st, 2021. I think the last video I made of the all-wheel drive car was like January of 2020. And then the world got put on hold and we kind of just business took off. Uh, I have a chassis dyno now, so I've been doing tons of tuning and doing that part. So we really never got back to what we were doing. I had the Chevette out again and we ended up going low eights with it, but we'll be making other videos on that and other things that we have going on in the shop. But this is mostly gonna be about the all-wheel drive Civic again. We've actually done a little bit of work on it. I'm gonna be clipping together some footage from like a year ago. So when you see my son, he's about six or eight inches shorter then than he is now. And he has a big mop now, so. Um, so we're working on the all-wheel drive car. I've actually had to buy parts twice because I got a bunch of parts because I'm in Canada. So we got a bunch of parts shipped to the border. And then once that terrible thing that happened happened, we weren't allowed to cross into the US anymore. So my parts are still stuck in the US. So to make this project go forward, I had to buy them twice. So once I'm ever able to go get that stuff again, I'll be having a bunch of stuff for sale. So right now, uh, I'll clip to the engine that we've switched up to. Originally, we were gonna run a K24A1 with VTEC Killer. Uh, I picked up a 2007 K24A2, uh, and then that's what we're gonna end up using. And things have snowballed out of control, and we have a better tranny, and we're doing cams, and a few other things, but I'll cut to that. You'll see the, us tearing down the engine and then we'll come back to this and we'll show you where we're at, where we've really got pretty much absolutely nowhere in a year, but we're actually making progress, so we're trying. So here we go. Originally we were gonna do a K24A1 uh, from a CRV with VTEC Killer and I forget what else I was gonna do on it head studs and that kind of stuff, but I was mostly gonna keep it stock until I found out what the rods look like in the K24A1s, they are like pencils, they're tiny. Uh, so I kind of was, I uh, tried to get a TSX, like a K24A2, and we were gonna run it as is. I uh, kept missing out at them at the junkyard. And then finally, there was a 2007, I'll post a picture of it, wrecked 2007 TSX with low miles. Uh, and I finally, it was with an automatic and I finally was able to snag the engine from it. So I decided, okay, we'll do a, we'll do a A2 engine, uh, humble performance. They're making tons of power on it. I was gonna do springs and retainers, uh, head gasket studs, and kind of leave it at that. And then I watched a Motion Auto TV video where they show a comparison from Eagle rods to the A2 rods, and the A2 rods look even tiny. So I picked up a set of K24 uh, A2 Eagle rods that we're gonna put into this with stock everything else. So I'm just gonna flip this around and show you the engine, and we'll go from there. So here's the engine. It's a... Uh, like I said, K24A2 2007 TSX. This is a good one, 10 and a half to one compression. Uh, it still needs to have the oil pump mod done if you're gonna rev it. Uh, I picked up a RBC intake manifold for it, so we're gonna be getting rid of this one. I have a Supertech valve springs and that kind of jazz. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're just gonna tear this down, get the rods out, put the new rods in and then put it back together with all the new parts. So that's kind of step one. So we got this thing down to a long block and it's pretty immaculate inside. Everything looks great. Definitely was a, a low mile. I think the windshield said 
220,000 kilometers, which is about 160,000 K, I think, which is nothing for a, a Honda motor from what I've been told. One of the cleanest ones I've ever had apart. So this has the 25 degree VTC, which we're gonna be swapping out to a 50. And yeah, it's got all, it's got the standard oil pump, which we'll be swapping out. And that's pretty much it. We're just gonna keep ripping. And then once we get this thing down to a short block, we'll come back. So we got it all apart, rods and pistons out. Looks amazing like I thought it would. Uh, it actually even has crosshatch still in the cylinder. I'll just shine my light in there. You can see like this thing is super mint. A little scuffing in the there, but that's to be expected. Um, Here's the rod difference. So these are the Eagle rods. We got one piston cleaned up already. I just hit it with the wire wheel and then took an old ring that I had kicking around the shop from another K series and cleaned it up. Uh, these things are really bad. I don't know why. A few K, the few Ks that I've taken apart now, the oil rings are always like super sticky. So took it apart, cleaned up all the oil rings, cleaned up all the ring grooves, put it back together. And then here's the Eagle rods. Uh, the only reason I'm using the Eagle rods is I think the pin is like one, one ten thousandth, like point. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. But the 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 pin is meant for the pin bore of the Eagle rod is meant for a factory pin, whereas everywhere else they're designed for the aftermarket piston. So this is the only one that will work with factory pistons. So got it all cleaned up, got it back together. Here's the comparison between. This is the K24A2 rod, and this is the Eagle rod, and you can see what I mean by, we'll just put this on top of this one. You can see the, the difference from side to side there in the beam. So it's got the right extra stuff where it counts. I'm totally blown away that these things make 600 plus on the factory rods, but they do. <laughs> so uh, Eagle re rates these rods with the ARP 2000 bolts at 900. Uh, I think that's kind of a stretch, but I guess we're gonna find out. So I got the rest of the parts, we laid it all out here. I just gotta get some boxes for it, but then we'll be installing the the SuperTech uh, springs and retainers and valve seals and keepers and all that kind of stuff and upgrading the oil pump and I'm keeping the TSX cams in this because we will be keeping the VTEC uh, in this engine uh, 50 degree VTC will go to uh, all the chains and tensioner and all that stuff looks really great like everything looks super great uh, we just ran out of brake clean so gonna have to make a another day out of it So this is where we're at now. Uh, we got the rods installed, the Eagles with the ARP 2000 bolts, got everything torqued down. Uh, we modified the RSX Type S oil pump that I got from the junkyard. Uh, I had to notch it out, if you can see in there. It's been ground and cut down and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, there's lots of videos on the internet about oil pump mods. I ported it a little bit. I don't know if it'll help. I put a washer in the spring to boost the pressure a bit. Uh, I had to, if you use the Eagle rods, you have to space up the separator plate. You can see the washers in there because the rod bolts hit the, hit the windage tray. Um, what else we got? Got my fancy Chinese. This is to keep the main timing chain from jumping off the gear. It's just like a little extra backup, I'm guessing. Uh, I'll just flip it over here and I'll show you the other side, what we got going on. So here's the top end. Uh, this is a JE Pro Seal head gasket. Uh, I seen Brent from PFI Speed, He's, he really likes these. And then one time in one of their videos they mentioned uh, Evo head studs and I was kind of intrigued about it and I did a little bit of digging because for the K series they only make 
uh, the 8740 ARP head studs, and then they make the L19s and the super expensive fancy stuff, which I really didn't want to spend money on. But Brent had mentioned Evo studs, and I did a little digging and looked up some part numbers and stuff, and it turns out, I think it's the Evo 9 or Evo 10 uses an ARP 2000 head stud, which is only like 40 bucks more, and it gives you an extra 10 foot-pounds of uh, torque, and which in, give, ends up giving you a little bit extra clamping force. So the part number is, I'll just grab it right here for, because I'm sure I'll get lots of questions. It's a 207-4206. It's a Mitsubishi two liter turbo head stud. And the only thing you have to do with this, we'll show you once we get the head on, is you have to put an extra ARP washer to because they're a little bit longer and the threads aren't all the way down past the head surface. So you gotta put an extra washer on, which is totally acceptable. But you can see the factory pistons there, still there. Uh, we gapped the rings a little bit. I think I mentioned that before. And then I've just been cleaning up the water pump and I have one of these outlets because I'll be eliminating the thermostat uh, housing and uh, heater core lines because the car won't be having a heater core or anything like that. So that's that part. So we're going to just uh, get the head ready and then we'll drop the head on and torque that down. Nico's going to torque it and we'll go from there. Nico's here getting a workout. We dropped the head on and he's just torquing it to 50 foot-pounds up from 20 foot-pounds just to, to seat the head. And then we're going to go to 90 foot-pounds next, which he's really going to get a workout. Don't get this kind of workout playing video games, hey? <laughs> There you go. Uh, this one. Yep, this one over here. He's learned the pattern already. And then that one. Oh, not doing my job of holding the engine stand. <laughs> and then the final one. So we'll come back after we get it torqued to 90 foot-pounds because Nico might need to take a break. No. Needs a beer break. <laughs> all right, so we got the head torqued down to 90 foot-pounds. Uh, we cleaned up all the rockers and cam caps and stuff because they've all been sitting for about a year. So we just put those on, put the lost, lost motion springs in, and then we silicone this back part here and bolted it down. So we're just gonna let it sit like that overnight. Uh, we're just waiting on the cams. Cams should be here this week so we can finish that off, finish off the front of the engine and it'll be ready to go in the car.